My name is Leona Crane. They, everybody calls me Noni. I'm the little sister Larry was talking about. Um, we, we spent our winter of 49, seems like shoveling every day. The, of course, the facility was outside, so that was the first path that got shoveled. And then it got, probably got shoveled twice more during the day. But and it was my job to feed the chickens and carry water to them. And, uh, but, and the adults would shovel the path because I was, not only was I young, I was short for my age. Short, little, small, whatever. And uh, I was absolutely forbidden to get off of those paths. I couldn't, after a while, I couldn't have got off the path anyway because it was deep. But I would carry water and food to the chickens every day, made, made sure they were all right, <coughs> gathered the eggs. And, uh, but one of the things was the water source in the house. Of course, we didn't have running water. It came in in buckets. <coughs> the pump was way out there and it was covered up with snow banks. So you'd take a bucket and a kittle and you'd go out and you'd bring in buckets of snow to set on the stove to melt for drinking water. You'd get a whole bucket of snow and you'd know you had at least a half a bucket of water. You get through, you had maybe an inch and a half in the bottom of the bucket. It was really discouraging. Lots and lots of buckets of snow. Because it was so dry. It, it was, well, moisture. and then <clears throat> then the snow, you don't get much water out of that much snow anyway, no matter, you know. And it was dry, but every day that was a routine that you, if we were going to have drinking water in the house, <clears throat> why, you went out and you brought it in that way and you'd set it on the back of the stove and it would melt down. Mom would take the tea kettle and pour a little hot water in there, get it started. And you figure you're going to have at least a half a bucket of water. And you were lucky if you had an inch and a half in the bottom of the bucket. But you considered you're lucky. And so like, while that was melting, you went and got the other bucket and you did it all over again. But, uh, and trying to, to get anywhere was so impossible. And uh, <clears throat> we were, we were fortunate. We were able to, we had wood source. We had plenty of wood, so that, and we had coal. And uh, we stayed warm, and once you got in from outside, you, were dry, you could get dry and comfortable, fairly comfortable. Uh, it's like Larry said, you didn't go upstairs. <laughs> You'd have froze down if you had, but in that house where we lived. But uh, for a, a short period of time, the wind had piled the snow in almost to the upstairs windows. That, that didn't last, it blew it right out just like it blew it in. And uh, right, you could look right down over the side bank down to the river and uh, the Everything was used in Larry's little hole that he chopped out. I think probably all the live, the wildlife around was probably drinking there too. And uh, you didn't see them because you didn't spend much time out there looking because it was so cold and there was so much wind. That is what I remember the most is the wind. It was so cold and always the wind was blowing 24 hours a day. It just, Never stopped. And it was kind of a shifting wind too, mm -hmm. wasn't it? It drew from all, you, could, you didn't know where it was going to blow from. It was just blew in from all directions. Seemed like always at, almost at the same time. I mean, I know that's not possible, but that was just almost what it was like. And how did the chickens fare? They, do they did good. We had a chicken house that had a, a south glass, big windows in the south. You put it put a lot of warmth in there. And chickens, if they're not warm, 
and comfortable and a lot of light tend to quit laying in the winter. This with the south facing windows. Our chickens laid all winter and it was a good thing because we ate a lot of eggs. And uh, we did all right. We did better than some, not as good as others, but we did all right. And uh, if, I, if I live to be 114, I never want to see another winter like that. It was, it was sad. The, now this particular area, we were lucky. We didn't lose uh, people. We lost livestock and the wildlife. That was, that, it just devastated the wildlife. And the snow went off in the spring. They were, you'd see all sorts of animals laying somewhere. And uh, I, after I was grown up, I was working for a little guy that he had been the mayor at one time in Douglas and he ran a a restaurant here. I was working for him and he was one of the ones that volunteered to go on these military planes that came up from Cheyenne <coughs> on these hay drops. And he said that was quite an experience that he said, of course they were roped so that they were safe. They, if they fell out they could toll them back. But he said, and he said there was a couple of times some of them almost did go out the door along with the bales. But he said, after the first couple of days when they were dropping, they said the horses, even cattle, would hear those planes and they'd start going towards the area where they were dropping, which they tried to find a place that was blown off so that there was as little snow as possible and they dropped there and so they could get as much of the hay as they possibly could. And uh, he said it was just, he said it was fascinating. You, you, they'd circle the area <coughs> to see those horses moving right up to that bare spot. They're ready to have breakfast, thank you. And uh, he said it was, it was great, he said. But, and then he was, he was like I just said, he said he hoped he never had to do it again. And I can understand that. But people were, the local people were, Great, it's like Larry said, they just opened their homes and took in us kids. That was our bus driver and his wife. They were a young couple, little girl, tiny. And they just just took us kids in like, you know, the orphans we were temporarily. Just and not, not thinking twice about it, just the right no, thing sir, to do. No, sir, they just, that was, you're coming home with us was the word. So we were just kids. What were we to, how were we to know, you know? We, I guess we thought we, maybe we were gonna spend the night in the gym or something, but we didn't. <laughs> but, so uh, do you remember uh, Douglas, the streets in Douglas? Uh, were they what, what little uh, what we, we saw was just uh, like from to school and back in the bus and home. Uh, when Dad, when it got so that he could go to town and, or they could go to town and shop, usually it was on the same type of day that we could go to school. So as far as getting downtown, no. Uh, and then, of course, I was I was a kid, what nine, something like that. Uh, all I knew is that it was cold and I was miserable and. My feet, I didn't think my feet were ever gonna be warm again because I don't care what you, how many overshoes you have on, it's cold. And it was the kind of cold with the wind behind it that, and it's like Larry said, there was always frost and snow crystals in the air uh, because of the cold. And it was just miserable. It pepper your face, I can remember that. It would sting when they, wind would blow that into your face. Do you recall anybody uh, in your family or people that you know getting any severe frostbite? Not really. Uh, of course, this was a rural community and you planned ahead. If you were going out, you dressed for it. Vanity didn't come into it. 
you you dressed for comfort, not for speed. So. And you were talking about these uh, these hay drops uh, and this what was this guy's name? Vance, Vance. Leaper. Yeah, and uh, volunteered mm -hmm. to, to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, he was because a they they were was the Air Force looking for people basically, of the area so they knew the area. Yeah, basically they furnished the the planes, but I mean, yeah, I assume there was some military people involved too, but there was also a lot of of civilians that volunteered to uh, help out. And I understand and that the civil, something called the Civil Air Patrol, just people with private planes. Mm -hmm. were, were uh, I think maybe some, but of course, where we were out in the country, why you'd hear a plane go over, but you didn't know whether it was military or private unless you could see it. And, uh, you didn't go outside to look. <laughs> and I know uh, some ranches were getting uh, supplies dropped for them because they I were think running probably, over yeah. Or, well, in that era, there was no snowmobiles, that type of thing. Uh, they may get a kind of a storm, a bad storm now, but they have the equipment to counteract it, to work with it. Uh, we didn't have that. You, uh, cars or trucks, and usually not four-wheel drive anything, and uh, you did a lot of shoveling. I'm like Elaine. I wouldn't care if I never saw another shovel, but I have, but I mean, that's how it is. But uh, you don't have to enjoy it. But, uh, so this is one that's just really etched in your mind. Oh yeah. Uh, as I said, if I leave it to be 114, I just don't want to ever see another one. I had a, a friend that said, oh, I'd love to get it gone to see a winter like that. And I said, no, you wouldn't. I said, it was just, it was just too devastating. It was sad. Uh, as I said, not particularly in this area, you didn't lose people we lost livestock, we lost wildlife, uh, vehicles went down, uh, houses leaked and roofs leaked and so on, you know, and uh, well, no. People pitched in. Yeah, yeah, they did. It was, well, as a general rule, the world is full of good people, all you have to do is find them. And, uh, but, uh, but I was but asking Elaine as you know, as a kid, she said, she, you know, she didn't play much in the snow. She didn't. Oh, no, no. Uh, by you. the time, by the time you got your chores done, you were so cold. You were just glad to get in, and Mom always had a fire going in the kitchen range, and uh, she baked bread. She baked all our own, her own, our, our bread. And always, and it, when days that she baked, you could say, oh, that smells so good in there. And, uh, but you could get warm. And so, uh, 